That's how this works, right? I've never recorded a podcast. <laughs> I was like, do I cut this? I don't know if I should do this. I Is think this... it's just there now. Yeah, it's, it's that's part of the uh, the existence of the... <laughs> Anybody the, watching now will be because my shit freezing. Yeah, they're gonna be like, I hit play. Did it's they dropping it frames pause? like crazy? I don't understand why it's they're doing dropping this. frames like there's a sale. No, so what we are recording now, we are gonna do friends working title, but we figured, or I wanted to do a where are all my friends episode with you already, and you figured, yes, let's do it, but why not also record it and then you could stream it on your Twitch, upload it to your YouTube. Because we really have two entirely different demographics and fans. Correct. Correct. So that's kind of cool. Um, for those who don't know, what is this? Is me interviewing you Let's on go. your podcast? What Let's... is where are all my friends? So where are all my friends was an idea that I had earlier in the year where I love, like, I feel like I always just get caught up in these conversations about come up stories and what it takes to follow your dream or whatever you're doing. I end up talking a lot about music because I work in music and a lot of times it's me sitting down with people that I know or new people in music and their come up stories and the challenges that they had, the pivotal moments, whatever. So I kind of just wanted to take those conversations and make it a podcast. So the title Where Are All My Friends, I had made a tour and it was called Where Are All My Friends and I couldn't think of a name and it kind of just fit. It's a good um, name. I like it. Yeah, it's a good name. But yeah, so it's kind of just like... And it, the, it's, a, it's, it's descriptive of the podcast itself as well. Strangely, it works. You're like, oh, this is a podcast about where all his friends are. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. It's great. It's a good name. But yeah, so it's like, it's the risky yet rewarding come up stories and like the entre... It really doesn't have to be music, but it's just kind of like that alternative life and like the, entre, the entrepreneurial spirit uh, of what that took. And I think a lot of times people see the end product. Right, and but they don't seems, understand how you got to that. Yeah, point. and it seems so rad. And they're like, and "Wow, this guy's so lucky. He's so lucky. He gets to do whatever he wants. You know, he gets to do this for his living." Or like, you know, you know, some people just they just have it so easy. But you really don't understand the work that went into getting to that point. Exactly. And I also think about like I think about young me, like getting into it and kind of looking for information and like looking for somebody like some place to learn. I knew young you. Yeah. So that young me was like, as I was getting into music. I would like, I remember asking like a tour manager, like, oh, how do you do this? And he was literally like that generic, like, if you have to ask, kid, you shouldn't be doing it. And I'm like, Ugh, that's that. cringy. Thanks for the advice, buddy. Really appreciate it. Yeah. I literally don't even remember who it is, Come but on, I just buddy, remember. Pass, pay it forward. Yeah. So I wanted this podcast to be that too. Like, I wanted anybody listening of any age or any point in their career to either be in it already and become re inspired or find some new motivation, or people who aren't in it to be like, oh, everyone starts at zero. And it is extremely possible if you're willing to take the risk. I so, think most people do. I think I think there's exceptions, of course, but I think most people do start at zero. Yeah. So that was the motivation behind the podcast. And it, it's ended up just being super fun. Like I learned so much, like people that I already knew, like, I mean, we've been friends for so long. Yeah. We, I've known you for like 10 years, probably. Yeah. And I'm sure there's going to be so many things in this where I learn and I'll be like, oh my God, what? I had no idea. So that part is super fun. That's true too. Yeah, I guess we, yeah, because it's like, it's not the thing that comes up in regular conversation. Exactly. You're just like, oh, that's interesting. I never knew you did that. Exactly. So like the format has been really fun and like, you'll kind of just follow along. Like I kind of have a format and yeah, Dan's dude, was yeah. over here. You're the, you're, one, so. it's weird because usually, because it's, uh, you know, this is my stream. I know. But it's your, it's your show, you know? Well, I love this part of it because I've wanted to add a video component and I just don't really have like, your room is set up so well for it. And like, I haven't done that. So this is cool for me too. But it's also like, yeah, it's, and it's like, it's kind of like a, a nice mesh of the two environments where it's like your podcast, but let's do it in a different environment where it's exactly. like, yeah, it's, so it's, I like that aspect of it. I really like that. So that is this, and I feel like it's a dope test. Um, I was going to say something. I forgot what it was. Oh, um, nope. Still forgot. Fair enough. I'll let you take it. I'll, sure. if, if it comes back to me, I'll just, I'll just, I'll spout, I'll spout it out. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, I guess we should just get into it. Like basically like you, again, we did the podcast, the Dan's computer magic podcast at your house. Oh, so, this is what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. uh, if you guys want to check out other episodes of Andrew's podcast, where all my friends, Oh yeah. how can they do that? I mean, available where all podcasts iTunes, are. So iTunes, Spotify, Spotify uh, what is it? Stitcher. Stitcher's great. Yep. 
Okay. Anywhere where you have a so podcast. So literally, okay, so it's yeah. literally available pretty much any podcast dispensary. Where you listen to podcasts, Correct. it's there. Okay. It's called Where Are All My Friends, and I'm at Andrew underscore FTW on all social media. Okay, cool. I yeah. like that I like that out of the way in the front instead of at the end, because at the end, people could be like, oh, I, I, I stopped listening before yeah. then, or, you know, whatever. I normally, like, I'll do the intro normally, and I'll be like, hey, guys, this week I'm sitting down with Frank Lepore. He's a professional Magic Gathering player, and I'll, like, do all that. But this is kind of fun to just, like, do it. Hey, it's your show. If you wanna, if you wanna take the helm and direct us, you are more. Than I welcome like to do this, this. Okay. and I think it's cool because like there's all of your fans and everybody who supports you that don't know this, so like it's cool to just explain it. Um, so, yeah, basically the way what I like to do, where I like to start, is kind of like very simply. If anybody doesn't know you, like your quick elevator, who you are, what you do, very quickly. Oh, uh, we'll I have been someone who has played magic uh professionally you mm-hmm. know uh in the sense that like i make money i make my living off of playing magic mm-hmm. uh for probably 10 years now mm-hmm. and magic the gathering for those who don't know is a trading card game uh it came out in like 1994 mm-hmm. and most of my 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 income is based on streaming youtube uh patreon podcasting and like articles articles for like various websites weekly articles which i think is also extremely cool because for me to say if somebody on my end is listening and they're not familiar with magic the gathering they could be like ah screw this episode whatever but i think on a broader side there are a ton of people making a profession out of streaming but the thing is like it's not it's not also it's also the the subject of what i've done is not the important part i think it doesn't have to do with magic right it has to do with uh, in a sense entrepreneurship almost where it's like you built something i don't have a boss right now i don't work for anyone if i don't want to work tomorrow i don't have to but like i provide content and you know essentially services for people and if they want to uh to patron those Mm -hmm. they're more than welcome to do so you know and my your your battery's low my um yeah it's gonna die probably you know the the my success is what i was gonna say is based on whether I whether I'm interesting or whether I do my job well or like whether people enjoy my content, and so that's entirely on me, right? Like, yeah. if if I just produce garbage or if I if I'm not interesting or if I'm not entertaining, like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to do anything. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be successful, right? Yeah. So in a sense, it's about like making sure you're you have to be um, what's the word I'm looking for receptive uh to what people want or like to what people look for or what people uh want to see you do you know well yeah but what i should say is like i think that all of this is based around i would loosely say gaming I, correct that, yeah so and, like, for me for, for me for sure yeah, yeah and that's to, that to me is cool because you're my first guest on that side and i think that a lot of the next generation and it's, it's just a thing now like it's truly becoming it can be a career so I'm very excited to have a guest. It doesn't matter that it's specifically magic or anything. I just think that you you are going to have a very cool story. And I'm very excited to sit down with somebody that does what you do. Because I haven't had a guest like you yet. Well, we're already sitting down, so. Well, yeah, it's begun. Yeah, It's so, happening. We're here. Yeah. Cool. So that explains it well. So now, take me back to the early days of, like, very basic, uh, where are you from? I am from St. Pete, Florida. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know if I knew that. So you're born and raised. I right? was Well, I was born in Clearwater. Okay. And, but it's just, the hospital just happened to be in Clearwater, but I've lived, I, I was raised in St. Petersburg, Florida, and, uh, it's about 25 minutes from where we are now. Mm -hmm. And I currently live in Clearwater, Florida. Cool. So it's like 25, for those who don't know, uh, it's like 25 minutes outside of Tampa. So I live in the Tampa area, let's say. Yeah. And did you, like, you pretty much grew up, like you spent your youth here? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like I, I actually never lived outside of the state until early 30s so oh whoa so like when we like when i came and hung with you in washington and all that that was like your first time like living that was my first time living somewhere other than like florida yeah oh shit. okay cool. i mean i've lived in multiple different places in florida like i've had multiple different houses and things like that but yeah i never lived outside of the state i never had really a reason to like a lot of people travel for jobs or you know schooling opportunities like things like that and i just never had any like there was no reason to uproot my life and live in a different state just for the sake of doing it you know what i mean completely yeah okay so then take me to like 
it, it normally like somewhere around like seventh eighth grade but like where you kind of like become your own person like where you're more than just like oh, i go to school but like what were like early interests for wow you? Like, that's funny to me i think when i actually became my own person was in high school okay um i went to a school called pinellas county center for the arts oh. it was known as pcca and uh it was it was a magnet program for gibbs high school and it was in st pete and i am i am fully convinced yeah. that going to that school molded me into the person i am today and i'm i'm eternally grateful for it that's um, exactly like take it, me there that's because exactly this it. because the experiences i feel like normal high school kids have mm -hmm. are mundane and routine and you're not challenged right but i feel like at this school all of my friends were artistic i had visual artist friends i had dancer friends i had uh musical theater friends i had tech student like tech friends from um like uh theater tech mm -hmm. and you literally like you didn't have the option to be uh isolated from that you couldn't actually remove that from your high school experience uh, so yeah. like my parents always wanted like a sports kid like a football player or like you know like a, they wanted to go to the games funny and i was the kid who like wore nail polish and you know was you know like there were several times where my parents thought i was gay yeah you know and you know it's just because i had this more liberal high school experience you know and some of my best friends uh you know were were artists in school and like it was just it was just a fantastic experience for me and i think it's it's what contributed to a lot of my 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 open-mindedness and my 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 creativity or you know what have you or my my desire to not have this like i don't i don't work a nine to five job doing you know like office work i just want to i want to be creative i want to create yeah, something i like, want to like have an impact i want to it i want to i want to interact with other creative people and at such a formative age it showed you that there was this entirely different alternative path to just like regular high school but you said something about your parents so yeah like i also i get it because when we were growing up like even that it's not that long ago i feel like i remember that it's like oh like being gay was like frowned upon like it was or like you know it was like almost taboo in certain circles it was taboo in the sense of like your parents were like oh well there's nothing wrong with it but i hope i hope yeah. they're not like, you know like, but I, like it's crazy to think that it's, just one generation ago yeah, it was still a little less accepted um but so like were your parents like largely supportive of you going to that school or like what was that like did you have a pretty decent they didn't like, really have life? that much of an impact yeah they didn't really affect them in any way right okay. like that um they just knew i was more i don't know for lack of a better term like they knew i was a little weirder than most than mm -hmm. than an average your average high school kid like you could definitely tell there was a definitely a dividing line between like the jocks yeah. Or like the, you know, your standard like high school guys yeah. and like the more artistic kids, you totally. know, the more the kids who kind of embrace their career, their, their artistic sides. That's sick though. So what led you to that school? Like, was it you picking? Was it a uh, counselor in middle school? Was it your parents? Like, how did you end up? What, what made that happen and not you just going to Gibbs? I don't even remember actually. Interesting. Cause this was like, it's a while ago. Yeah. It was a while ago. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Well, fair enough. So you go to that school in that time what was your focus like did you think did you have a specific career path in mind what were you studying in high no, school i have i had none i still like i, I don't even think in college i didn't even have a career path i think when i went to college like i was i went to college initially for marine biology okay which is funny um because i wanted to work with uh large marine mammals dolphins you know whales things like that because i they're amazing. They're amazing yeah. creatures, right? You've always like had a um, thing for animals. Too. I love like, animals. You've always been a dude that just loves animals. But I realized, yeah. unfortunately, that I wasn't good at science. I love science. Science <laughs> is one of my favorite subjects. However, I'm not good at it, right? And I accept that fact. I'm not good at the memorization. I'm not good at the math. I'm not good at the the application of applying these things in a an academic setting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I can read an article and understand it, but if I have to memorize all these things, formulas, like you know processes things like that I'm, it's just not which is weird because i think about how i can remember and memorize like ten thousand magic cards i can remember the, the year they were printed the rarity the set symbol the the exact oracle wording like and it's so weird to me that like i can remember this yeah these things that are interesting like these things that i you know i actively put to use yeah but when it comes to um something that would be a, a rewarding career for me I just can't put, I can't do it. I can't put the effort. I can't, I can't make it work, you know? 
Um, I don't think that's as uncommon as people think, though. Like, there are just certain things where, like, school, like, you go to, like, put that application in and you're just like, no, I'm not. I think if they're, yeah, I think if I'm required to memorize this, if I was required to memorize magic cards, I couldn't do it. It has to be something that comes naturally to you, right? Like, I'm naturally using these cards every week. I'm naturally accumulating this knowledge over time. Yep. Because it benefits me. Like, maybe next week I'll play in an event that I need to know a specific card for. So I'll know that card because it benefits me at that specific moment. You know what I mean? Yep. Okay, so then what was, so like, it doesn't matter that you didn't have a specific path, but what were you doing in school? Like, was it just like traditional, like, like, I guess what I'm looking for so is. I changed my, I changed my major at that point mm-hmm. and I changed it to computer science. Okay. And then I realized I didn't want to sit behind a desk all day. I just didn't want to be in a desk doing like computer stuff, working on computers, right? So yeah. finally I switched it to creative writing. Okay. And then my major was English with a concentration in creative writing um, at USF. So and you did go to college? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So my, my bachelor's is in is in English. Mm-hmm. And I just liked creative writing because I was it was a lot of freedom to do, again, to do what I wanted, to be creative. But also, like, so people like to to shit on, like, English degrees, you know? Like, they're like, oh, you got an English degree, a liberal, uh, nice, yeah. liberal, nice liberal arts degree. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. The, the problem is, like, people don't realize that you really have to make your own path with with an english degree right like you're not going to get handed a job out of college and be like like if you have a a software like a software engineering degree right if you can write code you can probably apply to 40 different companies and you'll get one of those jobs if you're good yeah because it's just a very very marketable skill right whereas like with with creative writing in english you have to really make your own way yeah you have to put those they give you skills and you have to find a way to put them to use you know what's sick about that is like i don't know honestly where i fall in college like i dropped out and just toured right away out the gate i think that there are certain professions and certain things where absolutely go to college and then there's others where depending on your drive and your intention you don't necessarily need to but with what you did with that degree is sick because you found a skill that applies so much in your life um but like it wasn't like you were expecting something to be handed to you it was purely you just learning a skill um yes and the thing is like so you're a little bit younger than me Mm mm-hmm and it's funny because I was in the generation where, like, you have to go to college. That's true. Once you Again, graduate high school, you have to go to college. That's another thing. You'll never get a job without going to college. And I was like, well, I guess I'm going to college. Only recently changed. Like, and now people are thinking, like, I don't really need this as much as I did. And yeah. you're also seeing all the debt that people accumulated by going to college. Yeah. And when I went to college, I wasn't completely aware of this. Mm-hmm. I wasn't aware that I would be accumulating this debt. And it would stick with me. And it sounds dumb to say in hindsight. But when you're 19 years old you don't really have that good of a grasp on finances. Like mm-hmm. they're not taught to you in high school. You're not like, right. Hey, this is how debt works. This is how long it stays with you. This is, these will be your monthly payments after you have these student loans. Like no one really outlines that for you or like, okay, cool. Here's a, sum they're just like, money. well, I don't know how much you're like, I don't know how to pay, pay for college. And they're like, well, just apply for FAFSA. Right. That's the extent of the, the knowledge that you get. And you're like, Oh, okay, I'll do that. That's, that's what people do. Well, right. So or I'll just do that to think like, okay, cool. Like you get, I don't know, say 30 K worth of debt. Right. Like, okay, sick. But then what if you don't understand what careers uh, typically pay? So you're like, yeah, cool, 30 k right. pay back in a year. And you don't know, yes. like, or oh, like, wait. $400 a month, that sounds totally reasonable. And you're like, oh, no one told me that for the first, like, four years after graduating. I won't have a great job. Right, because I'm... yeah, yeah, I'll barely pay rent. Correct. Like, yeah, so that's interesting. So, okay, so you go for creative writing. Right. And was there any job, was there anything that stuck... Uh, like where did you find like obviously magic became a huge part of your life like where did you start playing magic or when did you start playing I magic? started playing magic in middle school okay but I started taking it seriously after I graduated college right like okay. until then I was just like loosely playing the game um, I had some fun with it every now and then but like I always really enjoyed it and I always kept coming back and one of the things that always appeals to me about magic is that um, every three months mm-hmm. there's a new set I've actually an- tried to try to analyze why magic has stuck with me for God, 20, I don't know how many, I don't even know how many years, 20 years, you know, like as long as, as long as like, what I've set been playing. did you start playing? At? I started playing magic around r- revised slash fallen empires, I think. Wow. And it's so funny because like, there's so many games. Like I have like 30 games in my steam collection. Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. It's like 120. I don't know why I said 30. I just tried to <laughs> I tried to overestimate. I'm like, well, that's not accurate at all. It's like 120 games, 150 games, something ridiculous. 
And like whenever I go to load a game up, I'm just like, eh. But whenever I'm gonna play a new format on Magic, I'm just like, oh, this is it. This is this is exciting. And I think it's two things, right? I, I, and I'm not sure if this is even off topic. This is probably completely off topic. But one of the reasons is that every three months there's a new Magic set. So every three months the game is completely new. Mm -hmm. In two months from now, I'll be drafting a completely different set mm -hmm. in a completely different way in Magic: The Gathering. Yeah. The other thing is that, um, I forgot the other thing. Dang it. All right. Well, I, I like that then. I got so into it. <laughs> the other thing, let's say, um, well, I, no two games of Magic are the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're never going to play the same game of Magic twice. But the other thing, okay. The other thing I was going to say is that games are quick, mm -hmm. right? So like, instead of like, I, there's games like I've been trying to play the Witcher, for example, on PC and I, and I, you know, I have it in Steam, but I just haven't like been gotten around to it. And the problem is, if you look at how long it takes to complete the game, it's like a 70-hour game. Yeah. But Magic, I can play a game in 25 minutes. Yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, I can get two games of Magic in, or I can get one. It's in bite-sized, digestible pieces, right? So if I want to spend 45 minutes gaming, I can play three Magic games. Yeah. If I want to spend 15, I can still play one Magic game. You know what I mean? Or you could go play a tournament. All it's extremely... Yeah. Right. Or yeah. you can play for eight hours at a larger event. It's an extremely customizable way to... to to play to spend your time yeah and considering it's always changing it's like if your favorite game uh your favorite pc game let's say had a new downloadable content every three months yep like realistically and it's been doing that for how many years for 25? 20 years yeah, right yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of insane yeah like this is the longest i think i've ever seen a single like playable game under one name yeah other than like dungeons and dragons right but like that's mostly just revising things right like you're not changing the entire game every three months or whatever right so well wasn't it even like deck master like the cards weren't supposed to be that on the back oh like, it's funny that's one of the biggest um that's one of i think that's one of the biggest regrets wizards of the coasts has yeah is that it says deck master on the bottom yeah because there was going to be a bunch of different games that use the deck master thing right but then it yeah. ended up just being magic and they <laughs> wish they could change this but you can't but because all the cards are you know they're they're all they're all being they're all used together they're yeah. all used in conjunction then you can't because, I love that though. Because, I love that little flaw. Yeah, which, and like, it's so funny that it's like, well, I guess this is just stuck now. Yep. Anyway, so the reason I asked and the reason we talked about magic was it's it's interesting to me. So you find it in middle school and it's stuck and you played it, but where does that tie in? Like, I'm curious. Yes. So you get your creative. This is where you were. This is where you were getting to. Yeah. Um. After I graduated, I was looking for a job and I just took whatever I could get. Right. I was working. I was doing like uh, project management at like a local software company. Um, just little odds and ends, man. I, I was taking whatever I could get, really, because I lived in a, a duplex, a $400 a month duplex. Sick. And even now, if it was just me living by myself, that's super sick. That's less than I pay yeah. rent for rent now. Oh and I live God. with roommates yeah. right now, you know, like, but 400 bucks a month was insane. That's amazing. It's it's unreal. And it's, it's right. You probably know exactly where it is, actually. It was right on Fort Harrison near, like, McClellan Street. You know where McClellan is? Uh, you know the Publix on Fort Harrison? It's right around there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Downtown right by the beach? Yeah. Yeah. It was a it was a sweet area. It was like five minutes from the beach. That's great. It was crazy now that I think about it. I'm like, I wonder if I could just go get that for 400 bucks a month. I but I mean, also, it. what year is it? Uh, this was like 10 years ago, probably. So, you know? rent. yeah. Um, so, I wrote... I was, I was playing in PTQs, which are Pro Tour qualifiers for Magic the Gathering, and I was doing well. I was top eighting. Uh, I top eighted like three in the past few months. When did you start to get competitively good? Like uh, around this time, I think. So once I started college. putting time into it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, oh, got it. It was. I don't think. I don't think during college I was there, but after college I was like, I'm gonna put some time into this. I'm actually gonna try to qualify for the pro tour. I put in time at PTQs, and I top eighting is it means you're in you know the top eight. Uh, the first place goes to the pro tour. The first place wins you a slot at the pro tour. Um, and so I was top eight in PTQs pretty, pretty consistently. And that felt really good. Um, so I wrote a few articles for a site called top eight magic. Um, yeah. Brian David Marshall is a, is a large, he's known as the pro tour historian. He's a, he's a well-known figure in the magic community. And he has this, he had kind of like a blog website, uh, called top eight magic. Mm -hmm. And so I emailed him and I was like, Hey, I just did these, I, you know, I did well in these, in these PTQs. I would love to write some tournament reports for you. And maybe you could throw them on your site. And he's like, yeah, sure. I'd love to send them over. And I was like, okay, cool. So I did that. And they went up on a site and eventually, and he's like, I can't pay you, but you know, I can throw them up here. And, and I was like, yeah, sure. I, I want to do it for me. Not for, not for the, I'm not trying to benefit his site. This was definitely a situation where I'm like, I do want the exposure. Yeah. And he's not capitalizing off of it in any way, you know? So it was like, it was a great, it was a great like 
uh, relationship where like he was just throwing it on his blog. He has some exp- he has some some reach, mm-hmm. and I was getting some some published work, so to speak. You know. Yeah. Um, okay, so you finished college. So you had played through high school, through college, but it was just kind of like, yeah, cool, this is fun, F and M, whatever, or Friday Night Magic, whatever. And then you start doing that, you start getting good, you reach out to him, you write that, you're using your skill that you learned in college, like clearly right, you correct. can write. And then okay, that was like wait a minute. I was like, <laughs> go on. Okay. Um, go yeah, on. and after that, so after a few articles went up, I wrote to uh, tcgplayer.com, mm-hmm. and I was like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I've done. Here's here's some of my work. Yep. Um, I feel like I'm consistently improving, and I'm I you know I'm looking for a break. I was wondering if you guys would be interested in articles from me, mm-hmm. and they were like, sure, we'd love to. Um, we like what you what you have. So uh, yeah, we'll set you up. So I remember starting at TCG Player yep. at around like twenty five dollars an article, cool. But it was like a big site. TCG Player was one of the bigger, you know, magic websites at the time, and uh, I that mean, was it's still pretty. It's still very big. Yes, big, they're right? still very like, big. It's funny because um, I want to keep the podcast like not like you have to know everything correct. about magic. There's like and... three big websites mm-hmm. um, for for Magic the Gathering. I would say they're they're Star City Games. Yep. Uh, Channel Fireball and TCG Player. Those yeah. are the three big websites, and yeah. I, I, I've written for all of them at, at one point or another. But and cool. So TCG, TCG, so that's a big deal. Yeah, like it was, you're, it, that's I, a I was great, over the moon. Yeah, you yeah. know, and I didn't care that it was twenty five bucks a month because again, like I'm fresh out of college, so if I'm writing an article a week, that's an extra hundred bucks a month, man. And that's if great. Rent is four hundred dollars. That's like, I'm paying twenty five percent of my rent, <laughs> yeah. which I was already splitting with someone. Twenty five percent would be a hundred dollars. Right. Oh, oh, the 400. month. I thought four hundred. Right. Oh, right. But I thought you twenty five an article, four articles. That's a hundred dollars a month, right? I see. So I thought twenty five percent of the per article, rent. and I was like, that's. I got ahead of myself. That's okay. So let's go. We got it. Yeah, we got yeah, it. Yeah. We we rounded it up. <laughs> um. Yeah. So like that was great. That was that was my break in. After like a couple months. Um. Well, after so after like a month, I was like, hey, would you mind if I submitted some videos with these? I wanted to play Magic Online and record my matches. And, like, show off the decks I was talking about. So I did that. What year is this? This is... Jesus. 2009? See, because I think this that like that's... 10 years ago. That's important to mention. Because that's very common. And, like, of course, you just stream with videos now. Correct. But, but this was, there was Twitch wasn't even around. Twitch exactly. wasn't around in 2009. That's, this was just me playing Magic Online, yep. recording the matches. Yep. Uh, and then uploading them to YouTube, right? And then linking them in the article because right? YouTube was definitely very relevant. And like, because I remember that, like, that was when I first started doing anything with Set It Off, and Cody would record covers and upload to YouTube. We'd up- so like Cody, yeah, right, just like him, typical Cody. And then like we would do tour videos, so like YouTube was very poppin', but like it wasn't. It, there weren't things like Twitch where it was so easy, Correct. and like you had and to kind of like they actually really appreciated that initiative. They were like, yeah. oh, cool, yeah, definitely do that because okay. they didn't have anyone regularly doing videos at the time. Yeah. Um, and like within a month and a half or two months, they actually wanted, they emailed me and they were like, Hey, we'd like to have you as a full-time employee. And they wanted to hire me as basically like the community manager slash editor of the site. I have to pause really quickly. Cause what you just said is so important. And I think that that's a lesson that I've heard in, it doesn't matter what career path, but like you had a feeling you were just like, I want to do this. I want to stream these. I want to record right. these. And it wasn't the norm. It wasn't the common thing to do. Right. But whatever that inclination was, you trusted it. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you Because did it, it was no cost to me as well. You know, like I was just like, I like doing this. I would like to provide this content for you guys. If you're interested, let me know. Yes. And you did it. And I mean, take a risk. No, it didn't cost you anything. But it wasn't the norm. And you did it. And then after you did it, the concept was proven. And then they oh, it's definitely yeah. It. And it's funny because like the 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 video articles I did, one of them, one of the series I did was called Modern Monday, mm-hmm. and it was every Monday, and it was a an obscure modern deck. Modern is a Magic the Gathering format. Yeah. Um. And every Monday I would play a different modern deck and show it off, and people loved it. It was one of the most popular columns on the site. See, and like that's so cool to me, and I think that that's a lesson that I've seen, and like I, I learn it every day. I'm still reminded of it. But like, if you have a feeling, if you have an intuition of like, wait, this is cool, do it. Because even if it's not proven yet, your idea and your inclination of what's cool might be well, the even next they, big thing. Even if they say no, your biggest cost is that you said it. Like you just yeah. spoke up about it. That's it. Yeah. So like, And I then just, you become the guy who like 
even if you if you have 10, 10 ideas and nine of them suck and one of them is great, at the end of the day, you're still the guy with ten ideas, right? Like, yeah. Even if they're not great, you're still putting yourself out there and you have all these ideas. I just love that though. Like, I love that you. It wasn't like the format. It wasn't like TCG was like cool. Like, you made it. You're writing for TCG. Get ready to be popular. Like, no. You had. You just had an idea. And I also yeah. I did. Gut. I did a I did a web a web show every Wednesday called the Laboratory. Oh yeah. Uh, no no no. Actually, this is this is funny. I had a lot of I had a lot of shows that were plays on my names. <laughs> Uh, the laboratory was where I would take people's decks and play them and make improvements to them. Uh, Wednesday was a show called the Lapore Report, uh, which was a play off the Colbert Report <laughs> with a silent T. So it was the Lapore Report. Um, and it was just basically like I did magic news. Like I would be like, hey, this is what happened this week. These are the results of this event. This is what's going on. You know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, like, I mean, it was I was constantly trying to, like, figure out what people would respond to and, like, would, is this a popular thing? Do people like this yeah. kind of thing? Like, what formats do people like and what do you want to see? Yeah. And I was I was trying to figure that out and also, like, you know, benefit the site. I was like, yep. what what are people coming to this site particularly to do? And I think yeah. TCG Player was a good fit for me at the time because you didn't have the hyper-competitive players. Mm -hmm. You had a lot of the players who just wanted to have fun and experiment and play crazy decks. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what, that was my strength and that's what I spoke to a lot. That's awesome. So it was a good fit. I think it was a really good fit. And by um, that time then, so like that's got to be the point where it's like, okay, cool. You've graduated. You know you can write. You know you have a voice. You know you can express yourself. You found some amount of success writing and getting paid something. And I feel like those first dollars, even though they're not huge, is enough to just give you that encouragement and that sign of like, keep going. Yeah. Oh, so I would have to assume that right about that point is like probably where you got a hunch of like, this could be career. Like this could be something more than just, Oh, oh I knew fun. like, so this is the thing. Like, this is the thing I think with both of our positions is like, we take little jobs. We'll take everything we can get. Yeah. If someone's like, Hey, we'd love for you to do this. A lot of times we'll just be like, yep. Mm -hmm. is, can I add it to my resume? Yes, yep. I'll do it. Yeah. Will it connect me with other people who can give me other opportunities? Yep. I'll do will it. I learn something? Correct. Yeah. Will I will I will I better understand the ins and outs of this business? Yes. Okay. Dude, yeah. So as long as you can check mark at least some of these boxes, I think we'll take that opportunity. Oh yeah. And the thing is like because I think our, our fields are very similar, even though our subjects are very different, right? Which is why I'm, yes, I agree. Yes. And we've figured that out just in always talking. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, that's kind of like how I did things. Yeah, And it's that's why fun. I'm like, again, I'm so excited to have you on the podcast because I think it's even more proof to the kids that are out there trying to do it of like- It works very similarly in all your fields. Yeah, don't worry like about- the underlying It doesn't matter if you don't like magic, rules. right? Like it doesn't matter. Yeah, like there's still so many lessons to be learned. So, so yeah, I was I reached out and I was like, hey, I want to do this. They said yes. Uh, it, it, it proved to be popular. So I had this idea that was popular that I initiated and like I said a few weeks later they were like hey we'd like for you to come on board full time Damn. and at the time there was like four people in the company there was the the president the vice president and like two programmers Whoa. I was like the fifth employee of this company at the time it was pretty crazy so you were like the first content creator of that site oh uh, no 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 oh, 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 my no 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 well in the set no, no no they they were so here's the thing um the site always had articles right like Got there's it. there was tons of articles since their inception they were they were an article they were a content site Right. I was, I, I might have been the first, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to assume, but right. I'm pretty sure that I was the first content creator that they hired full time. Got it. That, that transitioned into a, a higher role. Right. Got it. Cool. And so I literally ended up being the editor and content creator for the next seven years. Like that was my full time job. I would wow. get, I would, I would, you know, clock in at nine, clock out at five, you know, and that was my, I would wake up at eight, go to work, go to, you know, go to, go to work on the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, I worked still. remotely from home and. You know, I did that for seven years. So that was from what ages? Uh, I, I don't know. That was from between like 2009 to like 2016-ish. Wow. Yeah. So And that's so cool to me because like, honestly, not everybody has that story. Not everybody can say, I graduated college. I had a feeling that I was good at this. I applied myself. And the second thing, right, because you wrote for one other site. Yes, but it was, yeah, right. But like not even like, it wasn't even right. like a paid thing. And then the second thing ends up being seven years of career. Like that's really cool. It 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 worked out quite well. Um, But the thing is you said like, you know, I, I knew I could write. So I wrote, I didn't, you know what I mean? Like oh. you don't, <laughs> it's like, I think it's like with anyone, you just have this imposter syndrome feeling where like you get, I, yeah, I have a degree in this, but like it hasn't been put to practice. You know what I mean? Like I've never been paid for my work. I've never had like, I didn't write any books, you know, yeah. like I haven't written any screenplays. What I wanted to do 
with my degree was write for movies and television. I have several. I have I have two pilots for TV shows written, and I have a, a screenplay that 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 I written that I wrote. And I actually registered with the with the Screen Actors Guild, and um, but like I could never like that's hard to break into. You know what I mean? So I did what I I did what I could do. Yeah. With magic because it was it was it was an easier on ramp to a career, but like my dream has always been to write for TV or to write for movies. And this is and why I love that doing that podcast because I literally didn't even know that about you. That's funny. That's crazy. That's funny. I'm going to come back to that because that just sparked a whole other thing. One other question that I have, though, is I couldn't do what you did. Like if I were in what way in the way of it takes the the reason the laboratory worked, the reason why Modern Monday worked. Oh, just because my last name. Of course. Yeah. So if you don't have my last name, you don't get to do these things. Yeah, I understand that. That makes sense. (laughs) No, like, so at at a certain point, like you actually did have to realize like you are very competitively good at this game. Like you, I'll play with you. I think you. I'm competitively. I think I'm above average. Yeah. So at what point? Like, where did that come from? Like, if we're tracing it all the way to the basics, what went? From I was terrible at first. Tabletop player. It's literally just repetition. I think. I, I and I've thought about this a lot. Like, why some people are better than other. I think there are some magic players who are naturally good at this game. Yeah. They can pick up a card game or any any strategy game, mm-hmm. be good at it within a month, mm-hmm. with because of like they're just naturally inclined to do so. Our friend. It Jeremy. took me years. Who? Our friend Jeremy. He's good at everything. He's, he's well. I think he's just good at everything. Like, That's right. Yeah, there are friends like that. Like you just have friends sometimes that are like Jeremy. Jeremy's something else. Um, good at everything. But I mean, as far as me, like it, it was. I I know. Like I can see my trajectory where like I started making better plays or you know making better decisions or playing better decks or you know things like that where I'm just like I, I don't know if it was. It's hard to look back and, and see any specific point where it happened, but like I can kind of tell where it's where I started like taking it seriously. Mm. And, and like applying the strategies that I knew were proven rather than like, there's a point in the beginning of my magic playing career where I was just doing what I wanted to do mm-hmm. rather than doing what was successful or what was correct to do, you know, in the sense of like winning. And is that talking about specifically playing the game? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Within the game, of course. Like, so playing, you know, doing the, cor- making the correct plays or playing the correct cards or, you know, conforming to the correct standard like because, 60 card decks or you know stuff like that so right because like that's even like as we've played because like i've stayed playing but it's always just been a hobby right and like when we play like you've watched me play and like after a game you'll be like well why did you do this or this or this right and there's like very fundamental well not very fundamental because you can casually play and get by but when you get to a level of doing it professionally or like at a very competitive level there is like a format to like wh- where your line of thought and the sequence that you should do things and the way that you should do things. And I would, I would assume that that's kind of like music as well or anything like where it's like, if you want to be a professional, here's a format. I want to speak to something you mentioned actually. Um, yeah. You actually, we were talking earlier about how you know what you want to do, right? Like, yeah. what do you want to do with your life? And when did you know you wanted to, and like, the thing is like, I also applied for plenty of teaching positions after, after college. I wanted to be an English teacher. I wanted to teach people. Um, I wanted to, cause I remember my English teachers in high school were fantastic. Mm-hmm. So there was actually a time I got suspended in high school. I got suspended in high school one time. You fucking rebel. I was late to class. Yeah. And, uh, it's funny cause I had AP English and my AP English teachers, we were going over, um, civil disobedience. Right. <laughs> so I got suspended. I, I got, I was late to class and the school had this really weird policy of like, if you're late to class, if you're tardy, you go to the tardy room. So you don't get to go to class. You go to like a detention type room until class is out. So you're not disrupting it. Right. Okay. But like, you're also punishing the kids who want to be there who just literally had an, like they just, I just ended up being late. Right. Yeah. Like it wasn't like I didn't want to be in class. I'm not trying to be a dick. I just was late. Yeah. So you're, you're basically like, you're infantilizing us. Right. You're just making me feel like a child that doesn't get to, I don't get to go to class. I don't mm-hmm. get to learn because I was late, right? Like, because there was an accident on the street. And like, then they're going to give you that reason. Well, you know, you should have left earlier, whatever, right? Like, I get it. It's my fault. I take blame. I just still want to go to class. Yeah, so you show up. So I show up. I have to go to the tardy room. I go to the tardy room. I put my head down. They're like, hey, no sleeping. And I'm like, okay. So I take a book out and I start reading. They're like, oh, no reading. And I'm like, what can I do in this room? You don't read at this So they point to a sign on the wall. Every single time... I, I, I break a rule, right? They point to a sign on the wall and I go and, and they're, 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 they point to a sign on the wall where it says like, no, no food, no drink, no reading, no sleeping, no home. Like, I'm just like, it's just a list of rules. You're just in prison. It, it's basically right. They're like, this is the rules of the prison. So I get up and I rip the sign off the wall. And I was like, 
That's what I think of your roles. Like I, I just, I was like, I was like, this is stupid. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Like you're, you're, you're penalizing the kids who actually want to learn for no real reason. Yeah. You know, and it was a ridiculous policy. So I got suspended for three days. My English teachers gave me A's for all the assignments I missed. They were like, hey, I'm proud of you for doing that. <laughs> I was That's like, awesome. amazing. Thank you. It was such a cool moment because like they saw I wasn't, I wasn't being a bad student. I wasn't being a bad kid. You were mad that you couldn't learn. I was mad that like, like during my, during these courses that are like teaching me civil disobedience, like teaching the, the benefits and like the, the societal benefits of civil disobedience. Like I was a student who was being punished for like a, a really, you know, just a ridiculous reason. Yeah. You know, you're not punishing bad kids. You're punishing like a, just the dude who's late. Right. So shouts to your teachers. That's awesome. But okay. So like you, you brought this up because I was saying, you know what you want to do. Oh yes. So those, so, 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 so what my point was, um, that was actually just a tangent because I wanted to talk about awesome English teachers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, I knew the kind of students we had in like the, the honors English classes or the AP English classes. And I was like, these are kids who actually give a shit about being there. Mm -hmm. Like if you're taking AP English or, or honors English in high school, like you care, like you're actually, you're choosing to take these classes, you know? Yeah. And I wanted to be in that environment where I could like interact with these kids and like actually have an effect on them and like share reading material and like stories and things like that. And I thought that'd be awesome. So I wanted to teach. And it's funny, the thing that the only reason I brought this up at all is was you mentioned that when you miss play after a match, I ask you questions. Yes. And I'm like, why did you do this? Yeah. Right. And I think that's always been a way I've approached things. Like if you make a mistake or like if you do something that I don't necessarily agree with, yeah, I'm going to ask you why. And I want you to break it down for me and go through your own thought process. And I used to do this with an ex of mine. And she was like, you'd make a really good teacher huh. because I'm forcing you to find your way. To, I'm not telling you the answer. That's I'm, true. I'm kind of forcing you to, to find your own way to the answer. That's actually true. You know what I mean? And that was something I've always done. I don't know why, but like I wanted you to tell me, yeah. I wanted you, cause I think if you say it, if you get there on your own, you're going to retain that knowledge better than if I'm just like, Oh, you should have done this. Totally. If I tell you, you should have done this. You're going to be like, well, why? Yeah. Well that, that, and that's so interesting because like, I guess it's just, you found something where your natural skill played into it. Right. Cause that line of thinking and that logic, like, yes, you would be a great teacher, but I think that that same line of thinking also makes you so great at what you do now. Um, and I don't know, you know, like you, you found it somehow, right? Like you found that thing where that shines. Yeah. I mean, it works for me. It's definitely, it's definitely something that has worked for me for the best. It's surprising how, how much it works for me. Like sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I'm surprised I get to like do this every day as my job in like various yeah. different ways. Right. I mean, the thing is like, because you and I, I think you and I are, are definitely um, strongly rooted in what's known as like the gig economy, mm -hmm. right? Like we have to take a bunch of different jobs and we don't always have a 401k to, to retire on. We don't always have health insurance from our employers, yeah. you know, things like that. Like we don't have those benefits and we're just like, well, I have to make sure I have X, X, and X set up in place, like these jobs, yeah. in order to pay my rent or to make sure I have a car payment or like, you know, whatever, for example. Totally. Um, and so it's it's sometimes difficult juggling like six different pieces of your of your income pie. But, you know, there's a lot of freedom from it as well. You yeah. know, like if I don't want to do a certain thing, I don't have to. You know, totally. I'm not obligated. Or if I want to go take the weekend off or go go out on a friday instead like i can do that and well, i can just work on sunday instead or whatever you know and, and like that to me is like the whole reason of the podcast is like that's what we all dream of that's what we all want to get to and i love reverse engineering it i love asking the questions why and how right to get there so like and there's a part of me that wants that 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 security though right like i've applied for several game design positions for hearthstone which mm -hmm. is a game uh created by blizzard entertainment it's also a digital card game yeah and um, <laughs> both of them, I had to do game design tests. Uh, both of my game design tests were well received. Uh, I got a phone interview one time and I was in like the top two people for that position and I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. The next time I was in the top five people, I didn't get the phone interview, but I still like my, my, my game design test still went to the, to the basically what, what would be the finals. Yeah. And I got so close both times, I you know, remember, and I still yeah. want these, I want these opportunities. Like I want if I could find a job like that where I work nine to five doing something rewarding that I'm going to enjoy going to every day, like that's, that's the dream, right? I want that consistency because I know like in 30 years from now, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to still play magic but online. Here's my thing is I think that 
anyone in that call it alternative creative space where you do have to do a billion things like I think that the lessons in every day that you have to grind it out and figure it out and make it work, yes, it's scary. I think you talk to anyone in that position and everyone kind of has that fear of like, yo, but like, what if it goes away? But the thing that you need to pay credit more to is every day that it doesn't go away and every day that you figure it out, you get stronger and better at it. And I wish more people credited themselves for that because it is an amazing skill and it takes courage to do. One thing to keep in mind is there's a lot of security as well in the fact that you're in control of it. Yes. Right? Like as long as I'm streaming on Twitch, as long as people are still interested in me, like... But wait, we have to get there. We have to get there in the format. We're not there yet. I'll keep my mouth Frank, This Frank was writing for TCG Player. What's he doing on Twitch? Correct. So we kind of sidebarred just because I found it so interesting that... You did go to write for Twitch, Mm -hmm. but you also had built a foundation of skills that led you there. So that's all I was saying. And I love that we sidebarred that because it was really cool. But we take it then. So you you wrote for them for seven years. And it was really cool, right? You did video articles. You came up with new things. While you were doing that, you were also playing competitively in tournaments, correct? Uh, Not super consistently. I've never... So that's the thing. Like, I've never played... I've never gone to a ton of events. Like... I think I've gone to maybe like s- less than 10 GPs in my entire life. Really? Yeah, I've, a GP is a Grand Prix. It's a, a large magic tournament. Yeah, I've, I've only gone to like maybe 10 in my whole life. I never traveled for them. Wait, so the one that we played in Orlando together, that was like a pretty big deal. That was probably like my f- fifth GP ever. And you top 10 it? You top... Top 8 it. Top 8 yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> God, that's sick. Okay, so... That was a great event, yeah. So then, okay, so you're writing for Magic. Obviously, you understand the game, but you really weren't... Because there's a whole other field, if anybody doesn't know Magic, where, like, you don't have to write for it, and you don't have to stream, but you can legit go and play in a tournament, I would say, almost every week. I mean, you could play every Friday Every weekend, there's probably an event somewhere. Like, but, like, you could play a more competitive event. Yeah, there's at, at, at somewhere, somewhere in the country, you can fly to or drive to a larger event, a larger magic event every weekend, I would say. And it's almost like poker, where if you get really good, you can, you like, there's cash prizes. And, like, Correct. You can... Magic is a harder game than poker, I would say, because there's more randomness, right? Like, yeah. poker, you can always choose not to play a specific hand or, you know, like... Hands are, like, I guess there is randomness in poker. Like, I don't want to say there's not randomness in poker, but, like, with Magic, like... It's just different. It's different. It's, it's yeah, yeah it's, it's for sure different. Um, but, so the point there, though, is you didn't do that. You didn't do the travel all the time, grind it out, play every tournament. No, no, no I never that. Did really that. wasn't That was never life. my style. Because I never... That was always exhausting to me, I'll be honest with you. Like, yeah. when I would leave my house on Friday night, I would find a hotel. I would hope I can find some food after I land in this in the city I've never been in that's still open at, like, 10 p.m., yeah. uh, check into my hotel, wake up at 8 a.m., find a way to get to the site, whether I'm just walking there or getting an Uber, mm-hmm. playing 10 rounds of Magic, hoping I can find some convention center food in that you know, in that event, like, yeah. like I could find a $7 pretzel in, in the four <laughs> minutes between my rounds. Yeah. Like, and then you get out of the event at like 10 PM on Saturday as well. And you're like, okay, well I guess I'm going back to the Outback Steakhouse tonight. Cause it's the only thing that's open after 10 o'clock, you know, and it's just an exhausting thing. You're just, you're waking up on Sunday doing the exact same thing. And then you're flying home and you're flying home Sunday night just to go to work on Monday morning. And you're like, it feels like where it felt like work more than, more than, relaxing to me and i just didn't it was never okay that aspect of of magic never appealed to me when i could just sit at home and play magic online and just play it more recreationally and have more fun with it like that was more fun to me okay my competitive like i was never hyper competitive okay that's that's actually a really interesting point um and i'm sure a lot of your fans would be like that's like a piece that i don't know how many people know that but i didn't know that that's cool so everyone knows that you're the only one who doesn't know my Sorry, bad. buddy. Sorry, bad. buddy. Bad questions. Bad host. Um, no, so uh, seven years research? then of writing for TCG. Correct. And you are playing. Like, you know, like I remember like when I was in town, like we would play Friday Night Magics and you would play a little bit of Paper Magic. Yeah, and in 2014, I was actually invited to the Magic Online Community Cup. Okay. Uh, which is like they, they did it every year and uh, it was like they took eight members of the community uh, and they flew them out to Seattle to Wizards of the Coast and you got to compete against eight members of Wizards R&D. Wow. And it was cool. a super cool experience. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Like uh, day nine, Sean Plot was on my team. Paul Cheon was on my team. Aaron Campbell 
like a bunch of a bunch of well-known magic players Bjorn, Bjorn Andreessen uh who is one of my favorite uh magic magic people ever he's he's a Swedish magic player I know who every one of those people are. I know I knew it's you great. would so I wanted to mention them so you yeah. could be like wow that's cool that all those people were there remark <laughs> no but um <laughs> That's cool. That I, I do know that that's a very cool event to be invited to. And obviously there's yeah, it was so amazing. many people invited. So, okay, cool. So you did 2014 cup. Then we, I remember playing a GP with you. So the little bits here. We and played there. a GP in 20, 2014. Yeah, it was also 2014. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was a te- December GP. And yep. uh, yeah, I made the top eight. And... So, okay. So even though when you would, like you could competitively play, you could hold your own, but that really wasn't a part of your career. In right. This. Correct. It was just cool. I'll hear, I'm here. I'll play whatever. It was just exhausting. Like I was also burnt out because like there was a time where I was, I was able to, I got third in this PTQ. I lost in the finals of this PTQ. I got top <laughs> eight of this PTQ. And like after a certain point, I'm just like, is the reward for this really like worth it's, it's like there's a, it's a heavy disappointment when you play 10 rounds yeah, and then you play the quarterfinals and then yeah. you play the semifinals and then you play the finals and you end up losing in the finals. And you're like, there's a part of you that's like, will this ever happen again? Will I ever get to this finals again? Just to, just to win next time. Yep. Like there's a part of you that's like, do I really, do I, I really have to win like 12 more rounds in a row next time and hope that I win that 13th round too. Yeah. It's, it's emotionally exhausting. So it's funny you say that because I really respect that that didn't make you go away from magic. You just, cra- you just more defined your lane in it. That's right? literally what happened. Yes. That's exactly what happened, which is funny. Cause people are like, Hey, do you ever miss uh, playing on the pro tour? Do you ever miss like, you know, uh, grinding and qualifying? And I'm like, no, not at all. Right. Like there's and- no part of me that's like, man, I wish I was playing at this GP this weekend. When people are like, Hey, do you want to go to Mad? Do you want to mm-hmm. go to like, I've had someone recently be like, Hey, do you want to go to this magic? They're called magic fests now. Mm. Do you want to go to like magic fest, you know, Denver or whatever. And I would be like, instead, can we just hang out there and do cool stuff outside of magic? Yeah. And here's the other, here's the other, the other side of that coin, uh, which is very relevant for me personally. I play magic currently 30, 30 hours a week. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, as we haven't gotten to yet, I, I, I stream. Yes. So Monday through Friday, sometimes on the weekend as well. Future Frank streams. Future Frank streams, uh, five to six times a week usually. Yeah. And the last thing I usually want to do on the weekends is play more magic. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like working at like McDonald's Monday uh-huh. through Friday. And then on the weekend, someone's like, Hey man, you want to go to McDonald's with me? Yeah. And I'd be like, I don't really, yeah, yeah. I really or, don't hey, want to cook up some burgers. I've had fries? a lot of McDonald's <laughs> this week. I really, but, uh, it's not, I'll go with you and I'll hang out. Yeah. But if you want to go to a different restaurant, I'd prefer that. Right. Well, okay. So what that point there though, is I think another cool lesson and I feel like I always butcher his name, but uh, Tony Say or she, he wrote Delivering Happiness, uh, the founder of Zappos. I have that book, yeah. Okay, so there's a, there's a one specific Delivering Happiness part. is a great book. It's a great book. And he talks about he sold his first company and he had a non-compete clause. So he basically was paid to just chill. Just, and yeah. he got so bored that he started playing poker. And he was good at poker, but this one casino that he would play at, he always did terribly. And he started to like doubt his skill and yes, his ability. Yes. And he he comes to this realization where he says, it wasn't me being bad at poker. I just needed to learn to get up and play at a different table or a different casino. So that was you have for to you. Find, yeah, you have to find your niche. Like, because just because it's one thing, magic is one game. Yeah. But not everyone is going to enjoy it the same way. Not everyone is going to be successful doing the same things. Yep. And I love that you didn't walk away from it when you're like, okay, this life of grinding out tournaments and all that is. I could have, I could have been like, well, I can, I'm never going to qualify for the pro tour. I might as well invest my effort in like a different game or a different career or do something different. And I I still love the game. And that's so sick that you found, you just were like, okay, cool. I still love the game. Here's a different way to apply what I love. Right. And you had much more success doing something you love instead of stubbornly doing something that you didn't love. And in all fairness, it took a lot of self, uh, it took a lot of self-awareness to accept to to understand that like i'm not enjoying this yeah let me but but i do enjoy magic as a game yeah how can i make what i enjoy about this game how can i be successful doing that that's you and know, like, that that's again is a universal lesson right because like you know i always think about things with music that's what i do and it's like there are so many different fields of music you could be an artist you could be a songwriter you could be something and be like i hate touring i hate playing live right and then you could go and make you could but compose there, what if i teach you know right. like what if i teach people to play music you could teach or like, you could you could go straight you could write songs there's for tons of things to do, do with a guitar with a piano that don't involve being on the road touring right like right. you have to find 
don't box yourself in to think that I like doing this one thing. There's only one way to be successful by doing it. Like, don't... It's also... The the way people do this is they see the most popular avenue, the most... And as the, mo, the only way to do it, right? Like, hey, I like acting, so I have to be a movie star. And if I'm not, I'm probably a bad actor and I shouldn't act. Yeah. That's not how it works, though, right? right? Like... Yeah, you I'm, can teach improv classes. You can do local theater. You can yeah. do tons of things. And that's so sick. So, okay, that's awesome. So you found that. You wrote for TCG. So what happens after TCG? Uh, after I left, me and TCG Player went our separate ways in 2016. Okay. Uh, and like a month after that, I top aided Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch. Shit. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Like I, I stopped writing for TCG Player and I top eight the pro tour like two to a month later you know? and after we had just talked about tournaments not really yeah being that's the funny you. thing like i mean it felt validating for me because i'd always known i was an above average player but like i never considered myself like super like yeah. i'm not one of the you know i'm not one of the best in the game or anything like that i've never considered myself that but i know i've put the time in yeah you know i've put in the hours like some people you know there's the saying that like you become a master at something when you put ten thousand hours in and i'm pretty yeah. convinced i put ten thousand hours into magic the gathering i would say so yeah. i would probably say more than that if yeah. you especially if you include writing and content creating like i think i'm well over ten thousand hours yeah and so, so it was wow. validating yeah. right like this was my <laughs> worth noting this was also the first pro tour i'd ever played in Holy! I qualified in uh, from the from the Grand Prix, but I had to postpone my invite until 2016. And then when I finally went to the Pro Tour in 2016, I top eighted, and uh, it was great. I so what happened? I I won ten thousand dollars. Fuck! I was uh, it's there were there were pro club there were pro 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 player levels then, mm-hmm. and uh, my level I, I was immediately silver, mm-hmm. which qualified me for two more Pro Tours. Wow! And um, I started writing for Channel Fireball like maybe two weeks after that was that because of your status of showing like hey like i'm relevant yes because I, once yeah. you once you top and once you top eight an event like that or once you do well at an event like that um you're usually sites are gonna like i had like three three different websites express interest in uh my report for the event like they were like hey we want to hear about your pro tour experience oh cool um one of them was star city games and oh. star city games uh i i sold i you know i I don't want to say sold. I don't know the word I'm looking for, but like they, I went through them to, uh, to publish my, uh, my top eight report, my pro tour oath of the gate watch tournament report. Nice. And, um, you know, then I started writing for channel fireball shortly after that. And, um, I wrote for them for about two years and we did a web show on, on channel fireball called magic TV every Wednesday. And, um, I would Skype in and, you know, it was great. It was a great time. We would talk about, you know, the current events and, it was pretty sweet because like they were like, hey, it was a live show that they would do in their in their at, on location. But whenever they didn't have a second person, a guest, I was like their go to guest, which was great. Oh, it was a great cool. feeling because like it was me and, and the host. Uh, it was either Mashi or or a guy named Andy Cooperfaus, and you know I, those are, those guys are great. I, I love I love everybody at CFB to death. They're they're super nice guys, and uh, they made me feel really really welcome. That's awesome. So again, like it was the continued version of what you were already doing just at a different site. Correct. An evolution. And it, yeah. And it felt like an evolution, right? Like it felt like this was the next step in, uh, you know, like it's been great because there wasn't much of a slowdown, right? Like I, you know, after I left TCG player, I was like, what, what's, what's next? I wonder. And then I immediately, I topped the pro tour and then yeah. immediately almost I'm writing for channel fireball and like everything seemed to just work out really well. Yeah. And you know, sometimes you just have to to leave and and like I, I I'm it's funny saying this to you because you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where sometimes you feel like you're out of place and you're like I just have to walk away from this place because it's not taking me where I want to go. Or even sometimes on paper, it's and, amazing. And, and it's your funny friends look at you and they're like, this. "Bro, why don't leave?" And you're like, "I just know I have to go do this." And the, you, we talked about this because we were talking about you being at Equal Vision. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because comparatively, I'm doing better now. Yeah. Than I was when I was writing for either of those sites. Right. Like doing more on my own. And it's That's a scary thing to leave, though. It is right when at the time you're like, "How's this going to work out?" Yeah. Uh, am I going to be able to pay my rent next month? Oh yeah. Will I have things going on? Well, especially for me, like I went from being kid tour managing bands, um, to getting my shot to being, Oh, okay. I want to work in the music industry and equal vision records is down to hire me. Yeah. It was and every, like, it was my identity. That, yeah, it was my, it. it was my it. foundation yeah. of saying, Oh, you don't believe in me. I'm just some kid. I work at equal vision records. Yeah. It was my thing. <laughs> so that's I, your identity. Yeah. yeah. I used it as an identity uh-huh. and it was almost like this, uh, 
not insurance, but it was just like that to me legitimized. Me. It legitimates it validates the, you, right? The right. Idea, it validates. That's my, my your, your equal vision is my pro tour topic, right. right? And like it's a fear that it's without said, hey, buddy, it, I don't need to prove anything to you because I'm already I'm, I'm here right now. And without it, you're just like, well, who the fuck cares? And it's a very scary thing. It is scary, yeah. But take me to the next part because it become. I know how we've talked about it, but like as much of a scary jump as it is. You can find some pretty unexpected cool things when you more double down on yourself. So you went from Channel Fireball. Uh, after Channel Fireball, I just I started streaming exclusively on Twitch. I wasn't streaming on Twitch. I would literally write like two or three articles for Channel Fireball a week. Yep. And that was it. All right. Okay. That was my working, right? And yeah. it felt like I was wasn't utilizing my time. Mm. After Channel Fireball, I started streaming on Twitch regularly, five days a week. Yeah. And I would upload my videos to YouTube as well. Yeah. And uh, you guys can find me at twitch.tv slash Frank Lepore or youtube.com slash Frank Lepore. Both of gang, those are gang. <laughs> both of those are, uh, yeah, those are links. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that, but no, uh, anyway, good. like, and once I started doing that, um, the audiences that I already built, like through channel fireball or TCG player, like they would find me on, on Twitch or, you know, on YouTube. And, uh, this is the first time I was actually like consistently doing these things, right? Like, I had a YouTube channel for years, but I never uploaded things to it because I was always uploading through Channel Fireball. Yeah. If I did videos yeah. for Channel Fireball, I would send them the videos and they would go on the Channel Fireball page. Right. Same thing with TCG Player. I'm yeah. not monetizing my own videos because I'm getting paid through those sites for them. Yep. Um, so now this is the first time I'm doing it on my own YouTube channel. And, uh, you know, I'm streaming for myself on Twitch and it worked out quite well. Yeah. You know. Well, I should also say, though, again, take it back to 2009 when you started uploading things, right? In 2009, if you had a really big following on your YouTube page, yeah, you were getting a little bit of monetization money, but it wasn't it's, the it's same. It's a different time. And having your content on hosted on very legitimate websites was much more valuable. And only more recently, owning all of your content and hosting and distributing it yourself and monetizing it yourself and learning that there's different ways to like make your own personal channel or brand has become more valuable. And I feel like that's shifting more recently. And I think that's very cool that you realized that and started working on that. One thing that's interesting recently, um, a new magic of the gathering client uh, has been released called magic arena. MTG oh, yeah. arena. It's a new digital platform to play magic online, to play magic, the gathering on the internet, I should say, because magic, there's two clients, magic <laughs> online and MTG arena. Right. MTG Arena is more mobile friendly. You can probably, you're eventually you're going to be able to play it on your phone oh, or really? on, your, on your iPad. Eventually, I assume so. I think that's their goal. Okay. I don't want to make any claims. Here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Frank said so. The problem is Wizards started a thing called the MPL, the Magic Pro League. I believe that's what it's, I believe that's what it stands for. Can you see Hunter behind us? Yes. Everyone <laughs> can look at him. He's having a good time. Um, MPL. Uh, and it's like the 32 of the top, like top players in the world, they get magic, they get contracts through Wizards of the Coast, the company that makes Magic the Gathering, mm -hmm. and their contracts are like 75k a year. They're getting, they're getting paid to do That's this. That's respectable, yeah. The problem is, they're also forced to stream every week, right? So, it's a real situation right now of, uh, uh, at least in my opinion, of too many cooks in the kitchen, mm. right? Like, um, it's there's too many options to watch. And it's basically like Wizards of the Coast injected 32 of the best, you know, none of these people streamed before then, mm. right? Like they weren't interested in the digital magic component. They were interested in playing physical magic, being the best physical magic players, going to events, playing like that and writing yeah. articles, right? Yeah. And now they're all streaming as well. And it's like if you, it's like if you streamed Madden, right? Mm -hmm. And you were like, man, I love streaming Madden. I'm having a good time. I have a good audience. But then, like, the NFL is like, we're going to take the top 32 football players in the world, and they're going to stream Madden, too. <laughs> and you're just like, but I'm just a regular dude. I can't, you know, it's like, it's hard to compete with these guys because they have much better pedigrees, you know, than your average streamer. Yeah. Right? But now it's a situation of where, like, if you have 13 of the top NFL players streaming at the same time, like, who do you watch? Interesting. You know what I mean? Like, it's really hard because if you're a new player coming to watch a streamer, you're not going to watch someone like me who's put, like, 10... You know, I don't want to say ten, but like four years of work into streaming. Yeah, you're gonna, you're just gonna gravitate towards the guys who have the, you know, the most views or have, you know, oh, I've heard this name before, Reed Duke, I've heard that guy, you know, and yeah. So it's it's weird. It's a, it's a situation where like you have so many different options and who to watch in Magic that it's like it's almost splintering the audience where it's like everyone has a few viewers. Yeah, and there's like maybe three or four top people who have like a ton of viewers. You know. Well, let me ask you this in real time then, because I find this so interesting. Like. 
obviously you've made a career out of this, right? And you've written for different sites, you've done different things, and you've made it work all along. And this is kind of like a challenge that we're looking at right now, right? Talking about like you went from writing articles for sites to now much more specifically or putting much more focus on streaming on your own, creating your own content and doing that, right? And now here's this new challenge. So like how does that beautiful analytical frank mind that looks at every situation like i'm just genuinely asking like what do you think like I'm tr- I've, I've been trying to figure this out for a couple months now so it's hard to, it's hard to figure out because the thing about twitch streaming right now in and esports in general is that everything is changing it's so new and like guys like me i, I feel like I, I did get in on the ground floor like i've had a i've had a twitch account since like for ages yeah right like i was streaming back in florida back in like 2014 like you remember this yeah and you know that's five years ago that's like infancy in twitch terms sure but now it's like it's it's got a real feel to it like where anyone who can stream will you know Mm -hmm. and it's hard to like i think a lot of people need to know that like i i i like my roommate felipe streams right yeah you're gonna you're gonna have a friend here in a second (laughs) my roommate felipe streams and you know, he doesn't get a ton of views. We got like two or three viewers a stream, right? And I'm like, you, you, you should only be doing this if you're enjoying it. Yeah. If you don't enjoy it, if you're doing it to be successful, if you're doing it to make a name for yourself, if you're doing it to like to propel yourself into like some kind of comfortable Twitch lifestyle, yeah, don't. Sure. It's not gonna work. That's not how it works. Yeah. You have to have a big, like, if you go to a Smash tournament yeah. and you Smash uh, is a is a popular a competitive game for the consoles. Yeah. Uh, if you go to like a smash tournament and you, you blow it away, if you crush, you're going to get, you're going to get team offers. You're going to get sponsorship offers. And if you start streaming on Twitch, you will, your numbers will be extremely inflated. Like yeah, the best, the best Twitch streamers are ones that have ways to either promote themselves or to prove they have something to offer you. You know what I mean? Interesting. And I feel like I'm still, I'm still relying on my pedigree. Like I have a pro tour top eight, a grand prix top eight. Yeah. I've written for TCG player for seven years. I wrote for channel fireball for two years. Currently I'm writing for a site called cool stuff, Inc. Yeah. Um, so you guys can check me out there at cool stuff, Um, and it's great. Like having articles in general, is just a great way to like get people familiar. Like so if, if people don't know where to find me, like when I had channel, like someone in the chat just said, you know, they, they first found me on channel fireball and they were like, who's this guy drafting and having fun with these games, you know? And, yeah. And that's great because that's, how you get it's like an advertisement right it's like hey check out my twitch stream you know it's like totally, the videos totally. and the articles are advertisements for your streams or your youtube videos stuff like that so well, it's just that's really interesting to me and i love you being so open about it because this podcast is like a lot of times i want to show the come up story but then like i love the honesty of like here you are you've made it this far and like here's a very real challenge every time we right? say come up i think of post malone there you go because there's lyrics because of the you know what's funny is like i'm not a huge post malone fan i respect him i like i'm all about it i but can I listen don't to, I, can, myself... I can listen to some posty really mm-hmm. I, uh beer bongs and bentley's like everybody mm. freaked out on that album that album's good and i was like yeah cool like i listened to it once and i was like sweet yeah cool. stoney's so, a good album too though i mean like i think it's good like i think his stuff is good but i i think he's i think he was overhyped initially yeah but i think he's i think his story is like i think i his, agree with that it, it's I do love that. But to come back to you, so we're talking about that now. And this really does bring us this up to This wasn't a post-mortem of, podcast? Oh, no, that's next. Oh, that's what yes. our that's what our podcast is about. Yes. Right? But no, like, I mean, that really does catch us up to speed about, like, where you are now, right? Like, that brings us up to your current life. And you do, like, you make a living off of it. You have been lucky enough to put all this time and energy in it and put it together and make it work. And that's not to say that it's easy. You have to continuously pour your heart and soul into it. Yeah, you never, you, it's, you don't really get to, it's not really a job where you get to like be on autopilot really. Right. Because like someone else is just going to come in and do it better. Well, okay. And that's exactly what we're talking about right now. Like the competition is fierce for like people who are like, you're providing content. Like people, you have so many options like you could just literally talk, shut off the stream and watch Netflix, you know, sure. like, I mean, I'm compe- as, competing as an entertainment Avenue. Like you have so many options for entertainment but, and, and everyone, everyone who's watching this or listening is like, Oh shit, he's right. I do want to watch, I'm yeah, just watch oh, Netflix. Shit. There's that new episode. We just lost yeah. so many viewers and listeners. But like, I, I think that you said something earlier to me and like, again, this is us just kind of like back and forth on the subject, right? There is no answer yet or we're not sure. And all of this is happening now in real time. But 
<laughs> some damn good cat petting. <laughs> For any of the listeners that aren't watching, Frank's cat popped up on my lap and he's just hanging out with me. Um, but, you know, you said something to me that almost answers the question or it, it potentially leads where maybe it goes. Where Leads you, where it goes. Leads where it goes. I like it. That's a good phrase. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, man. Where, it leads where it goes. Hey, man. Goes where it goes. Leads where it goes. Um, you didn't like competing in tournaments. You didn't like f- like flying out and. I also didn't like out, feeling right? bad after I after I like. I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Well, but I had a segue. Well, what I was gonna say was that you didn't like that, right? Right. So you didn't really do it. You found online and you wrote and you did laboratory and you made brews and you did all of your own stuff and you streamed and you had fun with it, right? Yeah. So I think that if I were to begin to try to answer that question. I would look at where your curiosity and where your excitement comes now. And I would follow that because as soon as you start. And I, I agree with you hundred yeah. percent. Like there is, there is an infectiousness to people who are excited or, or happy about what they're doing. Yeah. If you're like gleefully like enjoying what you're doing, people can see that. And that is enjoyable to watch. Yeah. If someone's sitting there miserable and they're not having fun with what they're doing, it's not fun to watch. It's you can off-putting. feel Yeah, that, you can right? feel like, it. You can feel it's like, oh, this like, guy's just trying to pay his bills. Like, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I've, that's happened to me before. Like, I've been in a match or like I've been in playing a format and I'm just like, I'm not enjoying this. And it's, people can tell. Totally. You know, but like when, like there's been times where I'm like playing a deck and I'm having a blast with it that I just, you know, me and maybe me and my friend Rob will put together a deck like from scratch and I'll just play it. And people will be like, you guys are having a blast and it's yeah. awesome, dude. Cool. It's so infectious. Like it's fun to watch, you know? And I'm like, that's great to hear Yeah. because it reinforces it. Sometimes you forget. Yeah. Sometimes you forget how you come across and like how much your attitude affects the people who are watching you. You know what I mean? Like they're not watching you to be, be sad. They're not watching you to be like, to, the, people want to, people want to feel good. Totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people just want to feel good. Like, no, I agree. So another thing in the podcast, because I, I, we could literally talk let me, forever. Let me, go, let me go back to one thing, actually. Oh, please, please. Um, we were talking about uh, how I didn't enjoy playing Construct. He's having. He's a, just yeah. Can you? Oh, you can't. So he's having a good time. Yeah, there. I was hanging out with the cat. Hunter's in bed. Um, Hunter literally got in bed and tucked himself in. So like, there was actually a time I top into the Pro Tour and I yeah. went to a Grand Prix in like New York. Yeah. I didn't even make day two. You have to have a specific record to make day two. Uh, at the time, I believe it was seven two or better. Mm-hmm. So you have to get seven wins, two losses to make day two. I think I was six three, and I didn't make day two. So instead, because I was feeling a serious bout of imposter syndrome, <laughs> like, do I deserve to be here? Am I? Did I? Was was my my was my top eight in the pro tour a fluke? Like, am I even good at this game? I actually went to a tattoo place in New Jersey, wow. and I got this tattoo right. It's hard to yeah, it's hard it's, to see. It's a hard one, and no one's gonna see it on the podcast. But if you're watching on the video, you can see it. It says "Sick Transit Gloria." Yeah, and everyone thinks it's from a brand new album. I, I get the shit all the time. Yeah, it's not from brand new. It's from where brand new probably got it from. It's from a Wes Anderson movie called Rushmore. Uh, Max Fisher is one of the main characters, and uh, he's trying to show off that he he knows Latin. So he says "Sick Transit Gloria." Glory fades. Mm-hmm. And it loosely translates to glory fades or fade fame is fleeting. And I got this, and as you can tell, I remembered it because it's the story I'm telling you now. I got this just to remind myself that like, I'm probably not going to be able to do this forever. Hunter, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to talk himself in. He's chasing his tail now. And it's... so I just got this to remind myself that like, you probably can't do this forever. Like, you're in a moment right now and it feels good because you're doing well. But like, today should remind you that you can't it's not always going to be, it's not always going to be successful. You're not always going to have these, these great, the, you're not, you're not always going to be successful. You know, like that's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. And, uh, so I just wanted to remember that. It's okay. So that's actually the perfect, uh, lead into like what I was going to ask you. One, I find it crazy that someone as skilled as yourself is that humble and like, and constantly tries to remind yourself of that. Right. Like a, a lot of times I think that if you were just new to magic or, new to anything that you're doing people would be like oh man like frank he's on top he's doing it or even at that level of after all that accomplishment you're still reminding yourself of that but what i was going to say was earlier in the podcast you talked about writing and movies and how that wanted like how you wanted that to be a part of your life right i would yeah i mean for sure i like creating content but i don't i hate that like a lot of my content is limited to magic related content well, I was going to ask, which is like, why I wanted to start this podcast with you. Yeah. 
um, because it's something outside of that. And I really totally. want to do that. Well, well, I just find it interesting. Like again, in real time, like it's not like you're established at all and who knows where life takes Correct. us, but like uh, established at all in, in writing movies and like, other things in, yeah, in, yeah. in a non magic environment. That's, that's right. But just again, as it's such a candid, honest conversation and we're talking like, you know, you brought us up to now, but we're talking about future things like that. Do you find, cause I've always thought about this. Like I think that music and working in music and management and touring is amazing, but I've always been intrigued in so many other things. And I don't look at it as a bad thing. I look at it as like right now I'm curious about this and I'm going to do it to my fullest ability. But later on, maybe I'm going to be curious about something else. Right. And it's funny because you can see this in like celebrities and things like where, you know, you'll be a, a world-class actor, but then you'll be like, well, maybe I just want to make, maybe I just want to make a country album or something. Maybe I just yeah. want to do. And it's interesting because as, as these people, they have, their, their built-in audiences are so large that mm-hmm. they can still be successful in those fields. Sure. And they also have the vehicles to do it, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, if you're an actor and you're like, hey, I want to go, you know, do this one thing, like you can afford the training to do it. You can afford sure. the, like the, my an example I brought up recently was Bradley Cooper, right? Like oh, Bradley yeah, Cooper. Oh yeah, how he's great at singing. Right, like we yeah. talked about this. Like there was a Bradley Cooper song that came on and I was like, this dude is actually a super enjoyable actor. Yep. And then he's just like, you know what? I'm just going to choose to do the all the songs in A Star Is Born. And I'm just like, oh, you're just going to casually learn to <laughs> sing and play. Like these are things that people make their careers off of, right? Totally. Like I'm in my career off singing and playing the guitar. Yeah. Bradley Cooper's like, I'm just going to casually learn how to do that. Right. This skill that like is so rewarding to people that they make their careers off of it he's just going to choose to do it but we don't know bradley cooper could be a jeremy of sorts where it's sure you know that's definitely possible but like i think it's like it's funny because once you reach bradley cooper status you get the 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 convenience of being able to hire a voice coach you can hire a guitar teacher yes and you can hire the best of these and you can train five days a week yeah and not only that your job is training yeah. because you're doing it for a movie. Right. And not yeah. only that, you're not paying for it because the studio is training you. Like, so it's but like, that's actually another cool point and lesson of like, if you have an interest in that, you can find really cool ways to accomplish your goals. I, I talked to a pilot on a flight so randomly, but a pilot was flying home and he wasn't, uh, well, you know, he was just riding in the cabin. And did, oh, did he, was he like in his dress? Was he dressed as a pilot? Yeah, but That's he was just tell. he was done flying. He was really oh yeah, cool so he's like it. yeah, I'm just heading home. Yeah, yeah, I flew yeah. earlier and exactly. I'm getting home. Yeah, um, but like he was talking about like how it can be so expensive to go to school to learn to fly. It's flying, right? Like, but I mean, he did. He worked and he was fueling planes and did this and this and did get his flying uh, his uh, initial license, but then put all his flight hours and log hours into teaching and into working so he wasn't paying to do them he was working for other people and he was doing he was getting paid to do them almost exactly and i find that that's interesting i think that that's a lesson that like if you do have an interest in these things you know bradley cooper just using that example yeah so now for a role he's learning to do all of that and now he's not off the grid he's gonna learn a skill that he loves to do and it's gonna then apply to a movie which is something else correct um and to bring it back more um i just i found it interesting I would love to see you. Um, I, the, the, the chat is distracting me. I'm not normally used to the chat. I'm only pointing out like funny things. Oh, um, he dressed up as a pilot and tells that. Story. <laughs> One of the comments was that was just Carl. He dressed up as a pilot and tells that story. Yeah. He doesn't actually know. That's not you. Um, you just made this up. This, that guy was just pulling a chain. Of course. But um, no. So for you, like I, I would be really curious if you did at some point, uh, challenge yourself to write and to do a whole I've wanted chapter. to for so long man like I've wanted to like I've wanted to write a book I've wanted to write it's I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a matter of like not being willing to do it I think it's a, a matter of like once I do it then what right like I've had a screenplay and I, I sent it to a bunch of places but this was like this was also like 10 years ago yeah and I, you know I would assume that the competition now is harder right because yeah. like there's so many more people doing that, but also like you just, you kind of just, we're in an age where you like, you just make your own movie. Now, if I write a screenplay, I should also just probably make the movie myself. Yeah. And you know, it's harder to get recognized because there's so many more people. But coming back to your own lesson, when you started writing for TCG, there wasn't other people making videos and uploading them. That right. was an idea you had. So as long as you follow that, 
wherever that curiosity takes you, I feel like you can do whatever. Well, I don't want to make it seem like I was, I wasn't the originator of no. like magic videos, for example, but I just, I was the first person to do it like on a weekly basis for TCG player. Right. Yeah. At the time I was one of their only people doing it at the time. Yeah. Um, another question that I wanted to ask you, and again, the story, as we were just saying, goes on and there's so much more to it, but, uh, to look back a little bit, if you could go back to any part of your life and your career at, at a, uh, point of uncertainty or turmoil, anything with knowing what you know now and oh, what God. you've done, where do you go back to? And what do you tell that version of yourself? I would tell myself to buy a lot more Bitcoin. <laughs> like, oh fuck <laughs> when did you first get bitcoin uh i got it last year i got it when it started to spike right okay, before it started right. to spike and i was like oh dude and it are... went it like tripled in value but then it came down to double in value and i was like eh. there were some friends of mine that played online games like halo where you'd you'd use bitcoin to buy modded armor and it was a joke. Bitcoin was actually a joke. Oh yeah, for sure. It was nothing. It was like yeah. it was pennies. He gave for away the all of time. his Bitcoin because he was done playing Halo. But think of those armors you got, man. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, no, uh, but so oh. what would you tell yourself though? Or where where do you go? It's sad to think about, you know, like it's hard to think about because you don't get that chance, you know. It's just a it's just a theory crafting thing where you're just like what would you do? And the reason I asked like, the question... Me, what's your biggest regret and how would you change it? Well, well the reason I asked the question is I find that this question will oftentimes go to a spot where a lot of listeners are currently dealing with it. That's a good point. Okay, so it's not for me. It's for It's, it's for the others. advice yeah, to that's, somebody else. That's a good, it's that's because a good it's sure. so relatable. It's like, you know, after this long of listening, somebody feels like they're that close to you. You know, it's funny because there's, there's a lot of advice and it's also... It's all that advice that you've heard a thousand times. But I don't... I feel like it just gets more... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like it gets more legitimate the more it's echoed. You know what I mean? Sure. And it's the advice that like fucking put yourself out there. Like don't wait until like the biggest problem people do if they don't feel like something's perfect, if they're not super comfortable with doing something, they don't do it. They wait and they just wait and it never fucking happens. And I'm saying like, don't worry about it. Like, if you're going to send that one perfect, I'm going to say it's better to send 100 resumes you might not be 100% sure about than sending one fucking resume that you think is perfect. That's what I think is is the problem. And, you know, that's just an example. Like, resumes, whatever. It's, sure. you know, articles, videos, submissions, whatever you, want to, whatever you want to talk about. Like, as long as you do something and you're putting your heart into that thing, like, don't wait until it's perfect because you'll end up just never doing it. You'll just never do anything because you'll never feel like it's perfect. Damn. That's just a product of, of, of producing something, right? Like you're never going to look at something and be like, this is it. This is perfect. Yeah. Or maybe you will, but it's not going to happen frequently. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Damn. And that, that might not even be the one where like you get anything out of it. You, what you think is perfect might have no bearing on what your audience perceives, which is why like there's that, there's that old writing adage where like you write something, put it in a dresser. Yeah. Put it in like a drawer. Yeah. Six months later, come back to it and read it. If you still think it's good, it's probably good. Yeah. Wow. Right. Like you, you want to, you want to remove yourself from whatever you're creating. Yeah. Because you're not going to, you're not going to see it the same way as the, as the creator, as someone else is. Right. So like, stop worrying about how perfect it is. Or like, maybe that line is not correct. Or like, maybe you don't like this character. Like just do it. Just fucking just, just put yourself out there and do it. Like, I love that. And I, I do like, I find that that's like such great advice in the sense of if we were to go well, like you back, hear that all the time, I know. Cause like people are like, well, you know, you just got to do it. Like just, but, but it's true. It's hundred percent true. And if we break that down and like, think about it on a more practical application, like when you made your first videos that led you to a we decent AJ's amount of success. Oh shit. Our yes. buddy AJ is, uh, is hanging out. So AJ is a good friend of ours. That's so cool. But no. So like when you made those first videos, were they perfect? Here's the funny thing. I was actually, that's a great question. When I first started making videos, not even when I first started making videos, throughout the entire course of my, my video making career, yeah, people would accuse me of cherry picking videos. They would be like, oh, he only plays the videos where he wins. Mm -hmm. And that was so not true. Yeah. Because I can't like, and I would, I would try to express this to people. I'd be like, you know how long it would take for me to like record a video, play a whole match, do commentary <laughs> And then just delete it and be like, nope, I didn't win. Let me do another one. And then just hope to get like four or five wins in a row. Yeah. Like to, to use only those five matches. I'm just like, 
I don't have the time to do that every week. I don't care enough. Yeah. You know, because I'm not trying to show you that the deck is great. I'm trying to show you how it works. Yeah. And that you could probably have fun with it, right? And yeah. I want to be honest and be like, if the deck doesn't win against this 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 particular matchup or if it's not great, I want you to see that too. Yeah. But it's so funny when people are like, you cherry pick your videos. And I'm like, no, I don't. Like, right. if I lose three matches and win two, I'm still going to submit those because they don't have to be perfect. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, it's another situation where like, if I did that, I would just be wasting so much time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're wasting time. Like, consider the value of like five perfect videos to like five slightly perfect videos, like, like very, very acceptable, good videos that you work three hours less on. You know what I mean? Like, and then you do that, like you're doing that twice a week. Yeah. You know, so you're saving like six hours a week over the course of a month. Like that's a whole day. That's 24 hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, it adds up. I, I love that. I really do love that. And with so many things, it's so easy to talk about this exact thing. It's so easy to think about starting a new project or doing a new thing and hear this exact advice and not do it. And I'm, I am the victim or I'm guilty of this too. Like I'm not the guy, like it took me so There's so many long. projects and I, yeah. And like you're like, I think what you're going to say right now, there are so many projects that I've brainstormed about doing or wanted to do. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to get a new, I'm going to get a new mic. I don't like this with this mic. I'm going to get a new webcam. I, I think I can do better with my webcam. I'm going to get a real camera and use a tripod. And like, there were so many times, so many projects that I didn't do because I was waiting till it was just perfect. Yeah. I wanted to have the perfect equipment. Yeah. I wanted to have the perfect software to, 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 to produce it on. Totally. And you know what happened? You probably got bored of the idea. I never did. Yeah. I never did those things. Yeah. And it drove me insane. Yeah. And I can look back and be like, I wish I did that. However, I bet it would be really well received. On the other side, I think that the things of like your character and your excitement and the fun that you had in the videos that you made, nobody is there looking, being like, you know, it's not 1080, it's 720. I'm out. Right. You know, like, right. it's not that. So I think the fact that you took those risks in the beginning, or not even a risk, but like you just did it. You just did it. Uh, I think that's amazing. Yeah, and I, I love I that like, you use that advice. I don't want to go. I don't want to go crazy and call them risks by any means. You know, right? Like, I was like just, it's, you filmed a video. You're, you're putting yourself out there, yeah, and like it's scary. It's scary, right? Sometimes you're 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 afraid of rejection, like everyone else, right? And oh, yeah. uh, you know, as someone who's been in the gaming industry for ten years, like I've done, I did coverage for Hearthstone at one time. At, at one time, I've I did I worked with Bethesda uh bethesda games at pax and that was amazing mm -hmm. um you know i i written for pc gamer like i've been in the game industry for like 10 years now yeah. and i have imposter syndrome like nobody's business dude every day like i'll when i would go to magic events people would come up to me like hey man i'm a huge fan of your your stuff like you really inspired me to get back into this format and i'm like me <laughs> are you talking to me and i'm like yeah they're like yeah man this is can you sign this and i'm like yeah for sure and it's so humbling and i'm like i just don't it's easy to forget because this specifically, you know, like we're not Bradley Cooper's, you know, so it's like this specifically, it makes you feel like you don't, you don't really directly realize like the impact you may have had on some people at some point, you know, and it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. And I, I also love like, and you're like, I'm just a guy. I just play magic. The guy. Like I'm just a dude who plays some games on the yeah. internet. You know what I mean? Like it's well, okay. And to add to that and like the last piece that I was going to say is like, because like you are just a guy that plays magic, the gathering in one sense, but the fact that you did put yourself out there and that you did stream it and you know, just what if people like this, whatever. And then that's making people's day. And like, that's even this podcast is like, maybe nobody listens, but like, maybe, it, maybe somebody does. And maybe but you know, but you can't, that's the, that's the other thing. And I got to this when I was talking about Felipe streaming, right? Like, even if nobody listens, mm -hmm. you have to go into this, doing it for you, not for those people who may or may not listen. Mm. If you're doing a podcast and you're like, if I get a hundred listeners a week, I'll do it. I'll keep right. doing it. Then you're not doing it for the right reasons. Correct. And people will know that. Yep. They can feel you not being into it, you know, and you letting your your viewers affect that. You know, I did an your interview, listeners, so to speak. I did an interview um, about being a manager, a music manager, the other day. Uh, it was like an email interview, and I forget the exact question, but it was just like, "What's like a good piece of advice on a this or a that?" But uh, it was kind of like something as a manager that you should or shouldn't know, whatever. And it was like one of those things of be very willing for it to be very difficult and twice as much work and way less gratifying. And if you still want to do it with all of those things, go do it. But it's like, you really do like when you've picked, you can do anything and I think you can have success at anything, but it really does have to come from a genuine place. Because you have to want to do it. 
because you, you're gonna you're oh, gonna hate it. Oh, the lows suck. And because it's just... even worse when you're like, I hated this for four years yeah. and I didn't get the payoff I wanted. Yeah. Because then you're like, well, sorry, you shouldn't have done yeah, it. Yeah. Like you shouldn't have done something you hated for four years. Totally. Don't do things you hate for that long. <laughs> Well, shit, dude, that's, I mean, that's the format. That's, that's the episode. You have covered it. You have explained your story to me. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. I had a, I had a blast with this. This was fun. Yeah, same. Uh, we're at about an hour and a half too. So that's a decent length, I think. Perfect. Andrew apparently did a podcast with his, with his dad recently. And that was four hours. I did. Yeah. So I, I, I feel like we didn't come close to that. But that's okay. I mean, he had a story, and I know man's real well, and I had some very specific True. questions about all sorts <laughs> of different times and how it related to my life. So, Tell me about you and mom's first kiss. <laughs> <laughs> he told me where I was conceived. I was like, Dad, stop. <laughs> Why no. do you know? No. Oh. <laughs> I'll never forget it. It was the back of the El Camino. <laughs> oh, Dad, He's Why? like, technically, you're a Puerto Rican citizen. I'm like, Dad, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, well that's amazing that's amazing well on that note shall we end it yeah let's do it cool well thank you for doing this anytime buddy i'm really glad we did this and uh i'm I'm honored to be a guest on this yeah i'm I'm so stoked to have you and i really think that like i love having guests outside of just music because there are so many parallels and this was i think if you were just limiting yourself to music i think it i I don't want this to sound bad i think it'd be a worse podcast no, and right? I agree like, with you. And I think that, like, to me, as I think about it, I want to spread more of this message and I want to talk to people that have taken risks in all sorts of different places because that, these stories, these conversations to me is what it's all about. And, yes, I work in music and there, I do want to encourage people to follow that right. path. Right. It's not a music podcast. It's an up and it's – a, it's a how did you get to where you – where yeah. how to get to where my friends are podcast. That's great. Because it's it. called, you know, where all my where friends. Are my friend. Yeah, where all my friends Well, shit, dude. Thank you again. Anytime, buddy. Cool. So then...